Hi, Nikki. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Good evening to you. My name is Nicolette. I am the creator for the podcast titled Your Wordless. Read that again. The juxtaposition of your very soul. First off, I'd like to say thank you very much for reaching out and for saying yes to be interviewed today. I am thrilled because obviously when I read your profile, you were once called as the world's greatest podcast and you are a podcaster. So, I mean, I need to get you on my show. <laughs> thank you for that. So, Nikki, I would love to read a bit of an introduction for our listeners today, and then we can get right into our conversation. So, good. so hey, everyone, we have Nikki below here with us. Nikki below has been called the world's greatest podcast guest. Why is that? Because he has been a guest on over 600 shows and always brings power, passion, and actionable tips to every appearance. He is the number one international best-selling author of the book, Finish Line Thinking trademark how to think and win like a champion the thought leader's journey a fable of life and the power of connecting how to activate profitable relationships by serving your network a two-time new york times best-selling author he is an in-demand and highly inspirational speaker to corporate audiences such as rbc lululemon royal lepage and tour star media he is the founder of eCircle Academy, where he runs a year-long mastermind and educational program working with coaches, consultants, corporate trainers, clinic owners, realtors, mortgage brokers, and other service-based entrepreneurs, positioning them as authorities in their niche. He is the creator of the Thought Leader or Heart Leader designation. So welcome, Nikki. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Nicole. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Nikki, can you share with us? What was it like growing up as a Nikki Below? Well, I'm actually originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was 11 years old, the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran. And my late father, God rest his soul, he could see the writing on the wall, he could see that this wasn't going to be a place to raise a Christian family. So he and my mom, they got together, they made a plan. And eventually, they managed to get us out of Iran. And we settled where I now live in Toronto, Canada. It took a few years. Uh, but at the time, like, I was a kid, right? I didn't want to leave my home. I didn't want to leave my friends. But looking back, it was the single greatest thing mom and dad could have done for me and my two brothers. They took us from a legacy of tyranny to a legacy of freedom. Inside every human breast beats the living heart of freedom. Every human being on the planet wants to be free, wants to choose their own path, to live the life that they choose. And I say this to people that are living in free societies today. Don't take your freedom for granted. It can disappear in a moment. It disappeared in Iran for me and my family in a moment. So stand up for freedom. My father was also a believer in freedom. And, you know, he thought that without freedom, you couldn't have free expression. Without free expression, you couldn't have free enterprise. Without free enterprise, you can't be an entrepreneur and make a great business. So my dad, he was a great man. If you knew him and you were looking for work, he would sit you down in his office. He'd call all his entrepreneur buddies until he found you a job. Which one? <laughs> Which one right. suits your calling? Yeah. <laughs> if you were looking to start a business, he'd sit down with you and help you make a plan, get access to capital, even get you some clients. If wow. you were a friend of his and you were looking to buy a car or a house and the bank wouldn't give you quite enough money, mm -hmm. he would top you up with a loan that he'd never let you pay back. So you could buy that car or that house. And people would go, wow, Nikki, your dad, that he sounds too good to be true. But he wasn't. He was that kind of man. And they go, come on, that, that kind of man doesn't exist. That's like in the movies. I said, well, you know, at least one man that I know of was like that, my father, Napoleon Ballou. And I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be somebody who helped people. I wanted to be somebody who served people. You know, because my dad always told me that, you know, son, growing up, you're a man here and your job on this planet is to love people. Life is about people. It's not about money. Business is about people. It's not about money. And I go, Dad, what do you mean business isn't about money? Without money, there's no business. I was eight years old. I was a smart aleck. He says, no, 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 son, that's true. <laughs> but without people, there's no need for money for business because business is about solving problems for people for profit. So mm -hmm. problems for people for profit. That is the purpose of business. So I decided I wanted to go into business because I wanted to be like my dad. And my dad would always say, Everybody needs somebody to believe in them. That lady in front of you, that's someone's daughter, that's someone's sister, that's someone's wife, you know, that's a hero to somebody. And 
Maybe someone just like you let her down. So it's your job to restore her faith in humanity. And remember, everybody needs someone to believe in them. Because we all have moments where we lose faith in us. And it's someone else's faith in us that steadies us and lets us move forward. And that's what I call myself. I'm a professional believer in people. Because what I do is I bring a spark of belief. And then I turn that spark into a roaring fire of self-belief that people have in them. And that's how they win. And I, I've done this for my clients throughout my entire career. Mm, I love it. <laughs> it was just the tip of the, I, I mean, I, there was a simple question and then we dove right into it. So you mentioned about freedom, Nikki. I want to ask you, why is freedom important? And why does free enterprise matter? Well, I think we talked about it, right? Inside every human breast beats the living heart of freedom. And without free enterprise, you can't be an entrepreneur. That's why I think it's important that every person listening to this who's in business take a stand for freedom right you can't allow people in government to start slowly slowly taking our freedoms away from us you got to stand up for freedom you got to make sure that freedom stays alive ronald reagan america's greatest president of the last 150 years once said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction it must be fought for it must be nurtured and if not it will not be handed to the next generation in the bloodstream, right? And if you don't do that, if you don't fight for it, if you don't nurture it, then there'll be a time where people will say, in America, remember in Canada, remember in the Philippines where men yeah. and women were once free. Remembering, I mean, that notion of remembering, like, why couldn't you leave it now? Why is it not happening now? Why aren't you fighting for it, right? And like you said, it has to be fought. Mm. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. I love it. So, Nikki, what is a charlatan marketer and how can you avoid him or her? That's a great question. So, I'll tell you the story from a client of mine. Her name was Adele. Adele became our client back in 2016. And Adele had spent $120,000 on charlatan leaders and gurus and ads and everything with zero return on her business. $120,000, zero return on investment. So it's a lot of money. Her husband said, sweetie, give me your credit cards. You're spending us into the poorhouse. So she said, okay, but she was heartbroken because she knew she had something great. She could help people. And when she met us, you know, she really uh, was not feeling good and not trusting people. But she knew me and she said, okay, I'm trusting you. This better work. And I said it will. And we knew what she was doing wrong. She was mm -hmm. using old, outdated methods. We gave her new methods that worked today. And that's really important. And Adele went from making like basically $500 a month to making $50,000 a month in less than a year because of what we showed her how to do. And I say this to people listening today, right? A lot of people today are, are telling you, hey, go out there, spend money on ads, spend $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 a month on ads. No result. Ads don't work the way they used to. You know, iOS 14 changed the game. You, you, can't, mm -hmm. you can't go out there and, and spend money on ads and get results the way you used to. A lot of people are spending money on ads, so it's not working. You need to use methods that work today. Well, one of the methods that works is podcasting and podcast guesting. You're smart. You're a podcaster. You know, that can help you get clients. I'm smart. I'm a podcast guester. In fact, I am the world's leading authority on how to get booked on podcasts and get paid as a result of being on podcasts. In two years, I made over $380,000 from podcast guesting. $380,000 part-time. And I'm, I'm wow. telling you, this works, <laughs> this works today. This is what uh -huh. people use. And then I, I, I taught it to other clients today. I have a client from Belgium. He's using my methods. In, in 84 days, he made a 20,000 euro. You know, I have another client here in Canada. Yeah, podcasting and using my methods, right? I have another mm -hmm. client here in, in Toronto. In 90 days, he made $89,500 using my methods, right? And this is the power of using methods that work today. Not methods that used to work, but methods that work today. Charlatan marketers sell you methods that used to work, but don't mm -hmm. work anymore, and they don't care. And these are people with good marketing skills, but really bad ethics, and they don't care that their methods don't work. People like me that believe in people, that love people, that, that want people to win, 
professional believers and people will give you methods that work today so you can win today. Mm, I am going to go into that in a bit. But first, Nikki, why do most people live in their comfort zone and how can you get them out of it? Well, you know, we live in a time that tells you it's okay, nothing's your fault and encourages you to be a victim. And that's a terrible thing because mm -hmm. all that does is have you feel comfortable, like you're being drugged and comfort is just like a drug. And instead of going after what you really want, instead of pushing for victory, you just sit there and, oh, I'm going to relax. I'm going to watch TV. I'm going to eat some pork. You know, I'm going to eat some bonbons. That's terrible, right? The way to get out of your comfort zone is don't be around things that make you comfortable. Don't be around people that are losers. Be around winners. Be around people who push themselves. And that's how you get out of your comfort zone. The law of proximity says proximity is power. You are going to become who you spend time with. I spend oh. time with winners. You need to spend time with winners. No more mm -hmm. losers in your world. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I need some moment to regroup, but I love that. Now, Nikki, how can you create a compelling personal brand through thought leadership? That's a great question. I'm going to tell you a story uh, about a woman who came to see us uh, about five years ago, May 2019. Very nice lady, a uh, functional medicine doctor. She made $100,000 a year, but she wanted to make a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. You see, she had a big reason why. Her father, who was her hero, was dying of brain cancer, geoblastoma. She was daddy's girl. You know, he was a successful entrepreneur. She wanted to honor him by becoming a successful entrepreneur herself. And she came to us and she said, can you help me? I said, sure. Tell us about what you do. She says, well, I can solve any health problem for anybody. Well, that's not a personal brand. That's sounding like everybody else. So I said, no, we got to help you do this differently. So we helped her come up with um, a system to figure it out. So we said, how many clients have you worked with? She said, oh, probably about 10,000. I'm like, whoa, that's a lot. I said, okay, who are the clients you enjoyed working with the most? She made a list. Who are the clients that you got the best results for? She made a list. Who are the clients that were easiest to do business with? She made a list where all three of those intersected was a group of clients. It turned out that it was women over the age of 45, married with children, successful family, successful kids, successful career, but they didn't feel good about, uh, about how they looked. They didn't mm -hmm. feel good about how they looked. These mm -hmm. women felt they were old and fat, and no woman wants to feel old and fat. All women want to feel young and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So she said, look, you can look uh, and feel the same way in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s as you did in your 20s and 30s. And she said, getting older is inevitable. The number advances every year, but aging isn't. So we helped her come up with a great name, a great brand for her program, Get Your Sexy Back. Boom. Within three years, she went from making $100,000 a year to making 100000 a month, over a million a year. And that's by creating a powerful personal brand. Wow. 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 So my next question, how can you add 20000 to $100,000 to your income this year? Well, I think we've been talking about that so mm -hmm. far, but one of the things you should do is you should come and learn from me how you can go get booked on podcasts and get paid <laughs> because I'll teach you how to do that. <laughs> it's so simple and so easy. I've shown it to 40, 50 people. You can want you to, learn on to go on podcasts. <laughs> Most people go on podcasts just to get visibility, just to be seen and get followers and likes. I don't go on podcasts for that. I don't teach my clients to do that. I teach you to go on podcasts with the intention to get paid, to get clients, to get leads. That intention's powerful. And if that's something that is interesting to you, to learn how to do something that works today, then you should call me. You should speak to me, and we should show you how you can do it. I teach a workshop called Get Booked and Get Paid five times a year. There's another one coming up in June. You should sign up for it, and that's how you'll learn how to do it. It's all on Zoom, so you don't need to fly anywhere. It's going to work for you. Mm. Okay, now you picked my interest here. Like, I want, can you let us in on a secret? Like, what are the maybe one or two tips about what you're going to show in your academy or in your masterclass? Well, number Master one week. is you need to have an intent to get leads and sales. Most people mm -hmm. go onto a podcast and their intention is, well, I want to just be on a podcast and be seen. That's a weak intention. A mm -hmm. strong intention is I'm going on a podcast to get leads and clients. That's very important. Intention matters. 
Wayne Dyer wrote a book called Dr. Wayne Dyer, The Power of Intention. And I say to you that you must have a strong intention. What is your intention? Is your intention to be liked or is your intention to be successful? Mm -hmm. That's important. My intention mm -hmm. is to be successful, to make money, to get, generate leads and sales. And that's the first thing I teach to you. So that is very important. Mm. What is the difference between being liked and being successful? What if people just want to go there and just, you know, want to get visibility? Because they don't want, they, they don't want anyone to think they're pushy or salesy or anything mm. like that. And I understand that nobody wants to be pushy. Nobody wants to be salesy. Nobody wants to be sold. You don't want to be sold. I don't want to be sold. But yeah. I tell you what, the problem with that is that there's people that could use your help. And you're not going to give them your help because of that. And that means they, they keep suffering with a big problem. You mm. keep suffering because you don't make the sale. And mm -hmm. then the charlatan marketer comes in and gets the business and he doesn't care. He's going to sell them and not deliver for them. So don't worry about that. Don't focus on you. You put all the focus on you. What are they going to think of me? That's because mm -hmm. you want to be liked. Stop wanting to be liked. Start wanting to help people. Start wanting mm -hmm. to help people. Focus on that person that you're, you're talking to. What's their problem? Do they, do they need my help? If they need my help, how bad will it be if I don't help them? I better help them. If the mm -hmm. focus is on you, you're not going to worry about, oh, are they going to like me? Are they going to want to be friends with me? No. Who cares? Who cares? Really? Really? Listen, Nicolette, let's say you're a businesswoman, right? <laughs> wow, let's I feel so attacked right a, now. <laughs> all all our say, listeners are like, yes, Let's say yes, you want to make an extra $100,000 US this year, right? Yes. And let's say that you need to make that money because you got children, you got a sick father, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do when I come on the phone with you? I'm going to go, I wonder if she's going to like me. I wonder if she's going to want to buy from me. Maybe I shouldn't be too pushy. Or should I be thinking, I wonder what her problem is. I wonder how, how much she's suffering. I wonder what's going on. Oh my God, she's got kids. She needs to pay for them. Oh my God, her dad's sick. I'm going to help her. If I think the first way, I'm never going to have a good conversation with you to help you. I'm too worried about what you're going to think of me. The second way, I don't care what you're going to think of me. I'm worried about how I'm going to help you, how I'm going to ease your suffering. And you will feel that, and you're going to like me. While in the first instance, you're going to think, this guy, there's something wrong with him, and you're not going to like me. If you want to be liked, people will not like you. If you want to be helpful, people will love you, not just like you. That's right. That's right. And that's why the intention matters. That's, that's also has always been my mantra as well. Okay. Enter everything with good intent. Intention is everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, intention good is intent. everything. Intent to serve, but also intent no, to, I too. To, to, to get clients. <laughs> to get yes. clients. Hey, it's beautiful to get clients. I love getting clients. I got a client today. $8,000. Fantastic. I'm very happy for me. I'm happy for her. Congratulations. She's going to make an wow. extra $100,000. But she spent eight thousand dollars with me. It's a good good mm -hmm. news for her, good news for me. Wow, okay, okay. I'm there. I'm almost there, Nikki. Almost. Oh. <laughs> we'll probably will have to take it offline after this. So, Nikki, how can how can you position yourself as a sure. branded thought leader so that your ideal clients come to you? I know we talk about this, I know we talk about intention, but break help us help me break down the the things. To our listeners. Oh, look, I'm going to tell you a story. I believe people learn through story. That's why I tell a lot of stories. Yes. So I had a client. Mm -hmm. His name was Carl Kroger. He, uh, he used to be an executive vice president for a manufacturing company. And he used to make a lot of money, 350000 a year. But he worked too hard. He got burned out and he quit. And then he decided to become a coach. And he loved being a coach because he wasn't working so hard anymore, right? But his income fell 80% from $350,000 to $70,000. That was not good, right? So he said to me, he said, hey, I need to be a branded thought leader. I want to make money. I, I said, said, okay, so right now, what do you call yourself? He said, well, I'm, I'm a coach. I'm a business coach. I can help anybody with any business problem. <laughs> Bad idea. I said, no, we can't do that. So he found out from him, well, what do you actually like doing in business. He said, well, I really like scaling. I help people scale their businesses. I'm really good at it. So it took us mm -hmm. a while, but we got clear on which type of clients he wanted to work with. And he wanted to work with lawyers, solo practitioner law firms who wanted to triple their business. At least a million dollars in sales wanted to go to three, five, 10 million. So anyways, long story short is 
once he started to brand himself as that guy, he started to sign up quite a few lawyers. And he went from making 70000 a year, right, to making like, which was like um, 6000 a month, you know what I mean, to making 50000 a month in his first month, second month. Now, not right away. You got to understand. It took a few months to get it all set up, right? But once he figured it out, 50000 and 50000 the second month. And then he said, okay, let me make 100000 And he did. But he said, oh, my God, I'm working too hard. Drop back down to 50000 So 50000 a month right, is 600000 a year. And the mm -hmm. one month he made 100000 so it's 50000 a year. So he made 300000 more than he used to make as an executive vice president. But he worked half the time. And he was known and branded as the, the lawyer scaling expert, right? And that is what allowed him to win. So if you want to be a branded thought leader, first of all, you can't be all things to all people. you got to be something specific to a specific group of people. So that's number one. Number two is you need to understand their problems and how to solve it. You actually have to be good at solving the problem. If you suck at solving the problem, it ain't going to work, right? And number three is, you got to be willing to go out there and talk to people and get business. Get mm. business. How do you do that? Business, right? Well, I'm telling you, these are some of the methods I'm talking about. You, you <laughs> ah, Nikki. You oh, you're podcasts, good. Right? You're good. Okay. 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 I know we talked about this just now, but if somebody, okay, so say, let's say everybody has different personalities, right? You present yourself as Nikki and somebody else will present themselves, I don't know, at the arena. So how are these two different or differing personalities can come across people without being salesy? I think I already answered this question. I said that if you put the attention on you and being liked, you're going to come across as salesy or you're not going to do anything. But if you put the attention on the customer and their problem, and it's not about you, then you're going to come across as a caring human being because that's who you're being, a caring human being. So it's all about intention and having that as the, the forefront of any yeah. conversation, whatever you're yeah. about to have. Whether or not there is an expectation that you close the deal, the intention is, I want to help you. How can I help you? I'm not going into any call to close a deal. I'm going into every call to help a fellow human being. Now, mm -hmm. if I help a fellow human being and mm -hmm. the, the way that I help them is a way that is going to really be valuable to them, I'm going to let them know and I'm going to ask them to let me help them professionally by signing up for one of my programs. But yeah, I tell you something, I quite often, when I know it's not a good fit, I won't. Like today and yesterday, there were two people I was on the uh, call with. Mm -hmm. They're great people and we had great conversations and I was able to help them in the conversation, but it wasn't a fit. Mm -hmm. So I did not offer to work with them professionally. And I don't work with people if I don't think it's a fit. I, will, I have to want to work with them and I have to have the right skill set to solve their problem. That's right. Wow. Okay. Thanks for me to ponder. <laughs> okay. So Nikki, what is next for you? Um, like I said, we're having a... Um, a workshop called Get Booked and Get Paid. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the website for it is ecircleacademy.com forward slash get booked if you want to check it out. Or if you want to have a conversation with me, you go to ecircleacademy.com forward slash um, appointment. Book a call with me and we can talk about whatever you got going on in your business. It's a free mm -hmm. call and I'll be happy to give you the benefit of my advice for free for uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, so that you can go from being stuck in your business to, to, to being magically moving forward in your business. Now, are you open to letting us know, our listeners, about the get booked and get paid? Like, sure. or do what they do need to, to go on to your website? Well, look, it's all the details are there, but the next one is in June, June 14, 15. Mm -hmm. The the price is two thousand US. It's uh, two days on Zoom. You can sign up. You can find out all the details, and you can sign up online. Hundred percent. Okay, two thousand dollars online, virtual, two days. Or if you want to have a conversation first, get on my calendar, and we'll talk. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Okay, Nikki, we're gonna pivot to a self word question because my podcast talks a lot about self word. So the question for you, Nikki. Negative self-talk can significantly affect self-worth. 
Yes. What strategies can individuals use to challenge and change these destructive thought patterns? Well, first of all, listen to good podcasts like yours, which are positive, right? Fill your head with positivity. If you're listening to... Ah, <laughs> uh, thank and, you. <laughs> it's the truth. It's, if you're listening to negative self-talk, go get some positive external talk, and that'll get rid of the negative self-talk because you won't have time to listen to it, right? So that's the first thing to do. Secondly, you should read positive books. I think, uh, you know, leaders are readers and readers are leaders. So mm -hmm. you should read lots of books. I've written several books. My books are great. Go read my books, but there's lots of other good books. Og Mandino is a great writer. Bob Berg is a great writer. Go buy some of these books and read them. And, you know, while you're reading, you're, you're having positive inputs into your being. And that's very important. And thirdly, you should have good habits like size, uh, eating right, and hanging around good, positive people. That'll make your life better. Who you hang around matters. It's very important. <laughs> Thank you. What is your makeup of your community right now? The people, the five, per the, the five people within your radar? Well, <laughs> you know, um, my kids, uh, my two sons, my, my, uh, my beautiful woman. Uh, my coach, Ammer, my coach, Mark, uh, those mm -hmm. are the five people I'm closest to right now. They're all awesome people, and uh, I'm very grateful that they're part of my life. Um, I think um, everybody should be very careful who their five people are. I love it. Well, thank you for, for being so open and honest. My pleasure, Nicolette. Nikki, what is your heart's greatest wish? Um, that every human being on this earth is free and that they get to pursue their dreams and make them come alive. And that's why I do what I do. Do you have a mantra that you live by? Mantra. Let freedom ring. Is there anything that keeps you up at night or do you sleep well? I sleep well. <laughs> okay. And last question for you, Nikki. If you could create a quote right now for you to leave to the audience listening and the world as your legacy, what would it be? Believe in people and, if you, and believe in yourself. And if you right now have lost some faith in yourself, then borrow mine, borrow my belief in you until your faith comes back. Wow. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for being you, Nikki. My pleasure. <laughs> so I know we talk about this, but the call to action right now is the, the segment is here. So how can people reach out to you? Um, EastCircleAcademy.com forward slash appointment to get on my calendar. EastCircleAcademy.com forward slash get booked to find out about and sign up for the Get Booked and Get Paid workshop. I, I am. Yeah, you, it's, 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 it's a morning and I feel like, I feel we're onto something here. Okay. Okay. I will definitely check your website after this, um, Nikki. Thank you. And there you have it, guys. You heard it from the man himself, Nikki Belu. Before we close off, Nikki, I'd like to personally thank you for the work you are doing for the world and for advancing every step of the way, despite the challenges creating trails for those that will come after you. For those listening, this has been that one podcast with that controversial name, Your Wordless. Read that again. The juxtaposition of your very soul. Now, if you find yourself thinking that you're wordless, well, you are not alone. But more importantly, ask yourself a level deeper, if I am wordless, then why the heck am I here? It is because your soul have chosen to be here energetically, all the way from the eaters. And for that reason itself, you are worthy and you are enough. This has been Nikki Below, my guest of the day, and Nick Nyaras, your host, signing off. Thank you.